While importing data could be a fairly complex and detail-oriented activity, Ascendix provides your clients with a import spreadsheet, which is what you see before you, a multi-tab import spreadsheet that allows you to place your information within here for fairly straightforward importing within Ascendix. You'll notice that there are multiple tabs and for each tab is a label and this would correspond with the type of data that is being brought in. So if you would like to have accounts and contacts or companies and those respective contacts, this would be the spreadsheet you would populate. Anything in red is a required field in order for the record to be saved. When you populate information on this spreadsheet, it will actually create an account or company record and a respective contact record. Not every contact needs to have an account, so if you place a company name on one line and the respective contact, and you place the same company name in another contact, it's actually only going to create the company once and the two contacts that belong to that company. So anything in red is required, anything in black is optional. You'll notice that the second line indicates the type of data that's supported here. For the most part, this is fairly straightforward. Um, this is just indicating that you, for anything that's a text, you could put numbers, you could put um, alphabetical values. An email needs to be a true email address with a domain. Anything that states pick list is really a drop down. And if you want to know what those drop down values are, there's a tab at the very beginning of the spreadsheet called pick list values. And so if we click on pick list values, you'll see that there are pick lists all throughout the system or drop downs and for account type we've got a particular um, set of values there so that would be you know corresponding to what you see here and what you see here if for whatever reason you want to add different drop down values the recommendation here is for you to if you want to make a change or make have us make a change it's possible number one highlight the column in a different color so we know that a change is occurring and then um, either remove the values that we have or add to them should you need to add. Um, if you've got a completely different list, certainly you could remove what's here and add your own, and then we'll know that those need to be your custom values. If you're okay with what we have, simply just leave it um, as is, and there's no need to uh, change colors there. So that's for accounts and contacts. That's probably the simplest and most straightforward as companies and contacts don't have all that exotic information, websites and zip codes and addresses and whatnot. The next tab is properties. I won't go through every single tab, but just the main ones. So if you're bringing in a, a list of properties that you've got listings for, or just market properties, the um, Technically, the two required fields are the property name, which could be a street address if it doesn't have a true name, and the record type. A record type is, is it multifamily, industrial, office, retail, et cetera? So this is where you would put that. The physical address, um, quick note about any record that has something called lookup. Lookup really here means that if you wanted to tag an owner, a contact or an owner account, which is a business, to this particular property, you could certainly put in their names here. Example, Ascendix Technologies might be the owner. Chris Peterson might be the contact. However, this is really um, not a text field. It's referencing the aforementioned, and I'll click back to the account and contact tab so that that owner actually needs to be here as an account and here as a contact. If you want their address and their email information, you could certainly populate it, but at minimum, uh, who the company or the contact is there. So just keep that in mind anywhere it says that for property ownership. You'll find if you're in the leasing space and uh, you've got a tenant, the tenant also needs to be an account and a contact since uh, it is a relational database after all. For the property record, there are 250 fields. By all means, there is no pressure to populate them. Um, the primary ones are listed here in columns A through H. Afterwards, they're in alphabetical order. So if you're looking for, for example, the total building size, that will be in the T section. So as you breeze through all the way here, you'll be able to see um, total building size if you want to be able to track that or parking spots. It just depends on how detailed you'd like to get. Um, property subtype, uh, that's a common one. So property subtype back to our pick list values. You can see that for properties, there's quite a bit of pick list. So property subtype allows you to really be granular with the type of building that is. So even if it's office, what kind of office, or if it's uh, industrial or retail, what's the, what's the specifics of that? 
So this is fairly straightforward, although this will directly correspond to Ascendix in each form and how it looks. This is really where a lot or all of the data prep occurs in order for us to um, import that data. And so obviously we've got every field here. You don't have to bring, if you don't have data in that area, you don't have to bring it in. You could simply just leave these tabs blank or delete them uh, in, on your copy of this spreadsheet. If you're planning on bringing in any leases, which are effectively tenants uh, occupying space and properties, same concepts occur. So going to the beginning here, you'll need to have the property listed. You'll need to know what unit and uh, what unit they're occupying. And the rest of the information about that tenancy is optional, including expiration date and who the um, tenant is and the size that they occupy, et cetera. It's fairly straightforward. We're here to help you with this process as it is very detail oriented, but I think that breaking it down into smaller tasks helps make this process manageable for all.